Well, good morning, everybody. Everybody, I'm like I'm just about to have a heart attack because first of all, this is my first time doing this, and I've never done it before. I'm usually talking in front of a live audience where I can see people faces. This morning, I went through like a roller coaster just to get to this moment right now. So yes, I am locked down since over a month, like maybe some of you, and um, and. I don't have to tell you that this is the most challenging time we've been living, I think, since our birth. Uh, I don't think our parents, or not, nor, nor even our grandparents, ever experienced something like that. Um, but for some reason, don't tell me why, but uh, today I'm nervous, yet excited, and I'm scared, and um, because, you know, uh, this is completely something, once again, new for us. So you have to forgive me if everything is not gonna be polished. You have to upset my flaws. I'll tell you that we have already a liquid team. Uh, in fact, I have to thank David Broth for inviting me to do this. He's the uh, founder and of course, uh, editor-in-chief of Jewelry Outlook, which I wish to thank publicly for this wonderful service that he's offering uh, to, to, the, to the, basically the industry. Um, he just asked me like a few days ago uh, to, to do this. And so I'll, I, you know, I'm just making it up as it goes. Um, and also I want to uh, uh, thank Jay Raniga out of you know, London. So the, the rest of the team is in London, I'm here in Tuscany, and uh, I am working here with my headset here. And so I am my, let's call it director J, which is telling me what's going on. So we are completely siloless, and it's one of the keywords that we'll be seeing as upcoming trends. So should I start talking about, you know, the Corona time? I don't think we really want to get set this morning because we are already being impacted. And honestly, I'm wearing my best smile this morning and I put my hoops on just to lift up the spirits because I have to tell you that I'm having my days and my morning. Um, well, you know, my mood of course is not so great, but as you can see, I'm a fighter and I hope uh, with the help of others to really lift up the spirits and, and give a wonderful present, but most of everything, a future for our industry. So what can I say? Um, before I get into like kind of a brief presentation and today is just, this is just, I, I want to call it a teaser, a, an opportunity for a think tanking, uh, a think tank of the future, a, a think tanking of, uh, of our industry, which is the jewelry and luxury sector, but most important, a future of humanity. Yes, because today we are representing humanity and whatever we are facing, it's kind of make us think. Um, so, um, what can I say? I can say that maybe, um, you know, uh, the most important thing we'll be facing uh, from now in the next, uh, you know, few months is going to be not only having some kind of, you know, personal crisis, but of course we are, you know, up, up facing um, a global recession, which it doesn't make you feel good, but at the end of the day, uh, to be, a, let's call it a, a Alan, an analyst, we have to collect data, analyze data, and really see what's coming next. Um, like just, just a little bit like in, over a month ago, uh, we were in Mumbai and we presented this one day inspiration uh, event called Crux. And we didn't know we were kind of almost, you know, envisioning the future because Crux was the equivalent of really kind of focusing on time of crisis and what we can, how we can benefit from this time of crisis. And we didn't know that was just coming and we were hitting like, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 our, you know, Corona time, like a month later. And here we are trying to figure out what's next. Now, uh, the think tanks that will be presenting the next, you know, upcoming weeks will be to inspire, to get, you know, creative, and we will be having not only me, but other experts that we can basically share their knowledge and also get ideas from everybody and we we'll put it together. Now, all the shows that we know, this is the reason why I feel very honored, blessed, and, and also responsible, because this is the first time that someone from the industry is talking publicly after like all the shows in the world have been canceled from Hong Kong, 
to Geneva, to Basel, and also they are coming Las Vegas, and maybe they're going to have the Istanbul show. We don't know. But basically, everybody wants to know what's going on. What, what are we going to do next? What's happening? Um, well, I would say that there is one winner here in out of everything else it's happening, which is technology. And technology, yes, we, we were already in technology era. That's what we thought. And we do have a phone and we've been chatting and some of us had uh, a website and some of us had some kind of, you know, Instagram account or social re, um, uh, presence. But the truth of the matter is that no one ever knew about technology, started using technology the way we have to do it now. Um, so now, I mean, even me this morning, I had to figure out what am I going to say? Who am I going to talk to? I'm looking myself in a screen and it feels like I'm going crazy because I'm talking to myself, but I'm aware there is someone out there. Now, usually I have live people talking to me. Uh, I, have, I see faces, I catch emotion. I can see people writing notes. Right now, I don't know what's going on. So that's a very interesting thing. But listen, let me start the presentation. And again, you're going to, I'm gonna share my screen and let's see what's going to happen. Now, if there is some unpolished uh, situation, please let me know. At least Ray will tell me in the other side of the world, which is London in this particular case. Uh, is everything going well? Fan fantastico, fantastico. So he's talking to me. So I feel like, you know, Jennifer Lopez right now uh, because he's talking to me and I don't know what's going on, but it's fine. So basically, <laughs> Jay said he's very happy. So I'm talking to him. See, we try to make it fun because you see, if we find a dimension, and I'll tell you exactly what it is that. So we are all broken. That's how the light gets in. And basically, this is a quote from Ernest Hemingway. And, and basically, uh, the idea is through this time of crisis, uh, any crisis, and this is nothing new, that's really where like humanity, an individual, a community really gets to the next level. That's where the quantum leap is happening. And that's how we really have to get to the next level. So uh, what's going to happen to our industry, but most important people, and how can we benefit despite the challenges? So exploring new opportunities. So we, I said they already announced, but I mean, I'm just, you know, it, you know, witnessing like you are, how technology, it's really the winner, but technology to a different level. I'll tell you one thing. Um, and, 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 and again, what is the next year of metamorphosis? Um, I would say that uh, technology and the way we are communicating on technology is changing because we have to make it more human. Until now, it was very cold. Website and, and, and e-commerce were, uh, were not interactive in the sense that there was not someone that was maybe, again, a little bit like unpolished, imperfect, like I am right now. But honestly, it's connecting us. I mean, I subscribed myself in the past to website and, 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 and there were like polished videos and perfect people that were perfect setting. And for some reason, I wasn't engaging. Uh, now, all of a sudden, uh, here we are, that we are exploring the new emotions. So technology has to become, and it's becoming emotional. How? Just being authentic. Authentic in the sense of being ourselves. Now, how can this be translated in our business? How can we take this lesson from the corona time into our everyday business. Well, engaging our community, and then this is the, the process and the journey we'll be discussing during the next uh, webinars and think tanks, how can we create a community? And what, who's, what is a community for us, for my store, for me as a professional, me as a trade show? How can I cultivate and engage my community? Is it just by publishing some pictures on, an article on, or even being able to touch people's hearts and believe and values, actually the new values. So that's why I wanna to get to my first important point. It's like emotional technology or what we call the human touch. Um, 
I am not an influencer, not a blogger myself, and I'm putting myself as an example, because don't take me wrong, I'm not trying to give you here any enlightenment. I am a, a professional who has been in the trade for many, many years, and I'm extremely humble, and on a daily basis, I'm trying to learn, and I'm trying to, to get to the next level, and after many years of, of being there, I never feel I'm achieved. But I'm putting myself as an example of how we can succeed to the next level, how we must evolve, and, and, and showing our fragility, our vulnerability, our, let's call it, I'm perfection, meaning I am perfect in my perfection and my flaws, we create an empathy with others and people align and we feel better. So we can do that from a business perspective, as a designing perspective, and in other sessions that we have on, on air here on Jewelry Outlook, we'll discuss how these values are also translated into products, into shapes, collections, um, material, gemstones, um, uh, finishes, and also communication. How can we be empathic with our client? How can we talk to them with the heart? So emotional, uh, emotional technology, it is something that is very, very important and getting to the next level, digital identities. Now, for some of you who are not familiar with digital, digital translates into physical and digital. Digital Physi identity means the blurring, the merging of the analog and the online, the offline and the online. Now, of course, I'm not a native of technology and I'm not a millennial. I'm actually, of course, I'm a generation X and as a generation X like you, like some of you, not all of you, I am learning, I had to learn uh, not just the technology itself, not just like, you know, the act of using technology, but how to, um, let's, let's say, express my own persona online. And I haven't done it so far, and maybe I'm not good at it, I, for sure, I'm not skilled as others, um, because I'm used to having a human touch, I'm used to communicating, I'm used to reading people's faces, energy. Now, how can I transmit uh, tr and, and, and really transfer these um, emotional uh, feeling and knowledge and, and, and willingness and hope to others through a screen. Well, I'm learning and this digital identity, it's part of this process. And why is it important in our business going forward? Because we can be using this world for our store. And maybe we're going to present collections online. And maybe trade show, we will have to evolve and basically become something completely different. And maybe even our salespeople will have to be able to make a sale over the internet and over a screen. And maybe we all have to learn about technology, like I had the heart attack until now, because my, my you know, uh, um, uh, Zoom was crashing with YouTube, and I'm learning that I cannot add certain things, otherwise the algorithm algorithm will pick up the music in the background and my computer will crash and it, like it happened. So, and I can't say I don't want to do it because the future is this one. And unfortunately, what Corona is teaching us is that if we don't evolve as, you, as professionals, but most important as human being, we are not going to succeed. Authenticity. Authenticity, it is the value, one of the most important value, if not the value, then is needed at present and future. It was always important, but now more than ever. And what do we mean by authenticity? To be a brand is not, a brand doesn't mean just to have a name and a logo and an image, but the inner values, the, the, the philosophical value, the belief, the credo, something that you, you, you really strive for, your mission. And in order to succeed with people, like I hope I, I am somehow I'm leaving something with you today, not as Paola Di Luca, but as an individual, you know, today I am really authentic here. I'm trying, I'm putting my heart right out there. And honestly, I feel important. You know why I feel important? Because I feel a part of the story and, and I am here showing how fragile we are, 
but how we want to make it and be successful. And no matter what, we will succeed all together, though, not alone, all together. And all these embraces in the new values. Who are the, what are the new values of, of our consumers? But humanity and why people will decide to buy a, a jewel versus another one, and why your company versus another one? Why purchasing from your store or your website or whatever you are versus another one? Is because you will be able, we will be able to pick up the new values, which are not not only the one from the previous centuries, but will be the one they are emerging in the next month, and hope, hopefully this Corona time will be over relatively soon because we have to make it because we are facing a world recession and we need to be on our feet very quickly. Last but not least, and then I'll give you an overview on what's coming up in the following weeks, but also how we can interact and get to the next slide when we, in, in order to really translate all this information into reality, is having a siloless vision. And, and this, is, this is a keyword or a buzzword that you're going to hear more and more. By silo mentality was like having the old mentality of having really a linear way of doing business. Now we have to have a siloless mentality. It's like forget what happened in the past, forget your rules, forget the vision, forget the system, forget. Uh, like Jay said to me, like last week about his, uh, uh, Jay Reiniga, which is my director right now, he is like, I have once a week a, a WACO time with my team, and by WACO being a creative time to imagining what's going to be next. And, and what's going to be next is rethinking completely our field. That's where evolution will happen. Evolution will happen if we are going to cancel what we know and start from, from scratch, but doesn't mean the ingredients that we had doesn't mean that you know what we used in the past is not necessarily working but maybe we have to rethink our semantic rethink completely our business rethink completely how we are starting from our humanity because the world is teaching us and corona is teaching us that just being capitalistic and not caring about the, the, the environment and not caring about people and inequality cannot just be a, a way of being forever. So what are the inspirations moving forward? And what are the, let's call it the scape that we should really kind of focus on and expand to the next level. Let me see how long we're gonna be on here. Um, it's, we call it cultural shift, social cultural shift, the era of volatility, of volatility, sustainable being, heritage and value design future. Now those are kind of like macro scale to observe and really how these, inform these values are relevant in our, um, in our lives and I will be relevant in the jewelry and luxury industry. Because let's remember, and I'm not going to be popular by saying this now, but it's a reality. Jewelry, they are not going to be a priority in the next few months because the first thing that people will need is to put food on their table and water and, and just pay their bills. But I'll tell you one thing. One thing that humankind and we always want is dreaming. We need dreaming. And if we cannot dream, there's no point of living. And jewelry and luxury is part of escaping from reality. And if I can wear a pair of beautiful hoops or jewelry or a stone or a color or a texture of, or a pattern, I will wear it because I want to dream. And I have a dream, you know, means, you know, dreaming all together. And hopefully, if we are able to translate dreams, not just gold in ounces, not just carrot weight, not just, but it doesn't matter how many SKU we'll be having in our collections, but how well they will be done. And it's not going to be about fast fashion anymore. It's not going to be about fast uh, product anymore because people will buy differently. So we will have to buy, we will buy less but better done. We would buy less product, but more functional. We're going to think about sustainable being, the environment. We are going to be like more aware and more ethical because we saw and we realized 
that circular economy has to be a concept that everybody will have to pick up. So we are going, we are forced to be more ethical, even if we didn't care until now, at least some of us. So in social cultural shift, what does it mean? Social cultural dynamics in the evolving new decade. And we're, we've been seeing that in the last, you know, a couple of years already, like even year, activism, fighting for new civil rights for our environment, how there is a difference between uh, generation and demographic and psychographic. And I'll tell you that until now we focus on millennials, now is also Gen Z. And actually I introduce you alpha generation, which are the children. Those are the children of the Corona time. What do these people will believe and feel? And, and, and generation uh, Z, which is basically the 18 and the, and the 22 and the 23, they already have a little bit of, they have different values of the, of the millennial. And even though some of us did not care until now because we were so self-involved with product and chains and, and stocks and stuff, all of a sudden we have to talk about this because those are the messages that we need to pick up in order to communicate and hopefully sell the dream or the need and the values that these people will look for. Sustainable being, being planet sensitive and, and, and sensitive and conscious. Well, you know, we have to talk about this. How big can it be? How how do we have how do we how much do we have to learn out after Corona? I mean, viruses their reaction to Mother Earth, and I'm not going to get into now being you know scientific. I don't want to be. This is about having an holistic approach, or let's call it siloless, um, but definitely being sustainable, being environmentally and aware, uh, being uh, understanding what's happening is a big value, and is going to be more and more um, uh, of a necessity, especially in our field and especially with jewelry. I'm sorry that something is happening here. Um, so the invasive and lasting consequence of consumerism on the planet, this is not luxury anymore. It's not something that we cannot think. But Actually, this is something that not only has to be discussed, not only we have to do like summits, even in our industry, but we have to rethink together, how can I do business implementing this value every day in my life? And now I'm not gonna to touch base on product today, but we'll be having other sessions uh, in the following week. I will talk to David, but we'll definitely focus on material, jewelry, collections, environment, technology, and communication of these concepts and, and ideas. Heritage and values. In order to be something, we need to be aware of our heritage, of our roots, of our, of our past, and, and looking at deeper into authenticity, not only in terms of being real, but who we are, our, 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 our history, our craftsmanship, and so on. So cultural history and legacy that continues to inspire. How can we go forward? How can we go to the next level? Um, we need to be inspired. We need to take the, the, the wisdom of our past, like we, we mentioned in our trend book 2021, ancient wisdom, it was never in fashion more than now. We have to learn from our past, from our knowledge, from our wisdom of our history. And last important thing is what we call design future, envisioning the ideals of tomorrow moving towards radical innovation of modern times. Now, that was something relevant before the Corona time. Now is even more than ever, more than ever it's relevant. And now we have to understand what is our future? What is our present and future? What it is that we can do completely different in terms of products, in terms of um, selling, in terms of communication, how can we improve and enhance our world? So today, I, I hope in this half hour, and I'm not going to take much longer uh, time for you. Um, I, again, I, I, it was already, uh, it's, it's exciting to be here. It was scary. Um, I jumped myself into, I, put, I, I really jumped into the unknown. 
but I, I wanted to show, I don't know if this is courage, but maybe I'm just, you know, I'm just crazy, but I think we need to be a little crazy today in order to survive. Um, so I don't know if Jay has some questions uh, because he's talking to me and I hear what, so there is any question, Jay? Andrew J from India, thank you for sending your, your, your questions. Uh, well, that's a good question. I think that we will talk about metals in the next uh, sessions, in the next, uh, but today I can say, uh, well, definitely people would be concerned about spending money. I think that maybe Demi jewelry or semi-precious jewelry will be popular in the next, um, you know, uh, you know, I would say month and maybe year. Um, alternative material will be important, but also the use of this material. I'm not saying the gold will be out because it would be a mistake from my, my, my side to say. But I would say that we all have to be creative because people will want to wear beautiful jewelry and designing jewelry will be very important because we want to dream and we want to feel good about ourselves, women and men. But the, the material and the affordability of jewelry would be important. I would produce less product, but better product. I would also do upcycling, maybe use material that can give a new life, but also would do recycling. So everything that kind of are, uh, is going to help the environment, but also help our pocket will be very important. So we have to think all together. I'm not giving definite answer because I'm not kind of yeah, God, and as you can see, it's like, but that's what I'm bringing to the table from my experience. Well, hi, Kathy Osborne from the UK. Thank you for sending your question. I definitely believe in revenge spending, yes. And I think that, look, let's be, I mean, first of all, as you can see, we are extremely positive here. So we are here because we believe in going forward, but also history also is teaching us that, you know, there is so after darkness, there is light. And we are already looking at light today and we are doing it together. And, um, I personally feel, but again, it's my personal opinion that the first piece of jewelry that I will purchase after this, it would be meaningful. It could be a talisman. It could be a symbol of we made it. Um, it can be a pendant. It could be a charm. It could be something that I touch and I feel, you know what? I went through this. And honestly, right now, why I'm telling you, I'm getting goosebumps because I really mean it and I really feel it. And I, I feel that I will celebrate and I'm gonna now fall in tears and start crying. We made it through even despite of difficulties and that's the first piece of jewelry. Can be a pendant and, and could be something that I can wear all the time without taking it off because we made it. That's how I feel. And that's it. Yeah. Well, Maria Ruggeri, which is my, my sweet friend from Providence, Rhode Island. Ciao, Maria. Thank you for joining. That was very nice of you. Um, well, um, we can do it like I'm doing now, meaning that the question of Maria is like, how can we promote our service? Uh, but, but why not, you know, feeling sensitive about the business? Well, it's a, a moment right now, the, the way I, I do it is not about being selfish. It's not about just like, it's about me, but it's about helping others and maybe share your knowledge. So if you can do anything that can be a tutorial, anything that can help others to learn from you, something that can give hope to people, something that can people can use, that's important because it doesn't matter. Right now, we are not going to, it's not about making money. Who cares about making money? Right now, we need to survive. And we are surviving if we are giving, if we're sharing our legacy to others. So 
I know what kind of wonderful jewelry you do. You're very good with bride, bridal jewelry, with demi jewelry. You've been doing and creating wonderful uh, uh, pieces and bespoke pieces for decades, but also wonderful. You, you brought like the province Rhode Island uh, tradition uh, to the industry. You do incredible things with crystals and with pearls, and you made incredible, you know, pieces, couture bridal pieces. Um, you can make people dream. You you can show people how you did it. You know, you can show your inspiration. And I think that it gives a great service to people. You can inspire, sharing is caring. Thank you, Jay. And sharing is caring. And, and being of a public service, I'm sorry for my dog, so I'm in my living room. So they are here and they're asking for attention. But basically that's what I would do, Maria. I would share and, and get inspired by people and inspire people. Yes, of course I can. I'll try. I'll do full screen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Am I full screen now? Yes. Sorry. Let me fix my hair because that's what I see. <laughs> what else, Jay? Any other questions? Okay, tell me the name of the person, please. Rose, Rosie, Rosaline, Rosie. I'm sorry, I'm not. I don't know if I pronounce your name properly. But basically, um, in terms of trends, product direction, that's a good question. I would say that there is no one direction, but definitely I can tell you. First of all, we are working on trend on the jewelry trend book 2022, and we are collecting him. I mean, that of course we are believing in you know concept. I mean, already the, the preview in June, and definitely we present the preview online, most probably on jewelry outlook, and so we'll be sharing all this information. The book will be out in September, but I'll tell you that people will be wearing both. Let's call it, we call it opti minimum, which is a new type of minimalism. It's opti minimum is optimum minimal, meaning something that is functional, something that can be worn every day, something that is well made. Uh, I'm not going to define the metal, but could be gold, but could be sterling, could be brass, could be anything based, but the design and the simplicity, yet the functionality, uh, linear shapes. That is one direction and can be, and it's definitely gender fluid. Um, but at the same time, I also see, you know, wonderful creation that are inspirational and that you can wear to show your mood, to share your belief, your value. I see nomadic direction. I see, um, you know, there are, we will be discussing during the next few weeks and we'll be focusing on trends, but definitely the big chunk will be like this kind of optimal kind of direction. Julie will become more holistic as well because Julie will be a, more and more an expression of our uh, belief and value and mood. Now, thank you, Maddalena Allegretti. Hi, from Spain. Also, you are a fan and, and, and wishing you, first of all, to everybody well, and, and we're gonna go through this. So when you hear silence, it's because Jay is talking to me. Um, well, Maddalena, this is the time of technology. I say to you and everybody else, and including me, we have to keep connecting with each other, creating online session, creating webinar, creating conferences. We all have to be uh, familiar with Zoom and or any other technology platform. We have to create online event because this is not about the coronavirus time. It's going to be always like that. So going forward, we have to start creating live events that they are not only entertaining and giving and sharing, but keeping and engage, um, engaging our customers. So it's going to be very, very important to figure out what can I do to engage my clients, to engage my audience and create a community. Now, all of a the sudden, these keywords, they're, they've been popular, what well, at least we will hear uh, in the last you know, decade or like years, 
Now they're part of our reality. We cannot escape um, uh, really uh, avoiding this concept. We have to create our audience. We have to develop a CRM, a database, and we all have to become skilled in doing these things that I'm doing now. So the reason why I'm doing it is also to show you that if I do it, you can do it. And I can teach you, we can teach you to do it. We are here for that. So I'm not skilled, but I'm doing it. So uh, of course I have Jay that is helping me in the background that we worked on, and, and I have David. That it, so another important thing is create alliances. You may use Jewelry Outlook as a platform to do that, to basically create your private event with clients, maybe. Uh, maybe trade shows like uh, YEG, Italian Exhibition Group, will create platform and maybe other shows will start creating platform. Maybe we're gonna have show online. Uh, maybe we're gonna have event online. Now, that doesn't mean that we are not going to be uh, networking live because we will be extremely important and we can't wait to be out of the lockdown and I can't wait to be in September crossing fingers to be there in Vicenza and give you a hug to have, you know people but at the same time this is something that has to be part of our routine what I'm doing today has to be something that has to happen if not on a daily basis but that's what you have to do in the next month or so Well, you know, the question of trade shows, it's like, well, I, in a, like Jay was saying, yes, I partially answered. I think that there is much more. The only thing that I have to say and I have to, um, we have to focus on is like very little company, especially trade show companies have invested on digital departments. It's not a choice anymore. We have to do it. I mean, until now, of course, shows, and they will keep doing this, of course, I'm not saying they will not, they invested on the real estate part, on the physical part of the show. And very, and maybe, maybe no one really worked on the digital part of shows. Now the digital concept, the digital reality has to happen also for trade shows, because if they don't, we are going to skip market altogether. Now, the pan this pandemic historical event that we are facing during the digital era, uh, which is maybe the worst that humanity ever faced, is because of the speed that the virus, the outbreak really spread uh, globally because of the way we travel. So what about if something like that will happen again? What are we gonna do? Are we going to be prepared or not? That's number one. Is it people are going to be traveling so uh, often in the next several months or maybe a year or two because of the reception, be the recession, because of the fear, because of everything else? Maybe yes, maybe not, maybe something in between. So maybe, and that's the question, maybe, and then together we'll answer, maybe we will have to really de develop a digital department, invest money in that, because until now I didn't see much budget from any shows on digital um, uh, promotion, digital content, or even creating, let's say, professional skills of what I'm doing right now. We have to have more people that is going to talk the way I'm doing now. I'm not, I'm not good at this. I'm just making it up as it goes. But we have to, the whole set of new professional skills will have to be developed, including for trade shows. Yeah. Ciao, Sailesh. Ciao, Sailesh. Ciao, everybody. Yes, I, th I think we have to, I think that one thing that we have to do all together, um, it is work on our um, uh, digital identities 
And so we will have together, and this is what I'm also saying to you, we might have to investigate to do think tanks together. And I'm also offering my time to do it. Um, at this time, it's going to be just, you know, public service. I will be doing stuff on Jewelry Outlook. We can also do it on it privately. So everyone that is interested in doing these kind of things, we will help, um, again, as public service for the time being companies. We together have to be develop um, in a, a, a visual, a, a, a pub, a, a, I'm sorry, digital identity. And by digital identity is understanding who we are on, on uh, socials, on website, but also create what we call this emotional technology, the human touch that I'm putting right now. Right now, I'm speaking my heart and maybe we have to start doing this also on social. So more video. More live videos. I think live is going to be 70% of what, we, what we're going to sell online 